Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be reviewing Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Baby, baby. I'm going to be keeping the beginning of this video spoiler free and then I will be going into my spoilery thoughts towards the end of the video and I'll let you know before I get into spoilers. So if you didn't know about this book, this is a young adult fantasy book by Margaret Rogerson. I believe this is her sophomore novel, her second book. I read An Enchantment of Ravens and I actually really liked it. I was in the minority, I guess. A lot of people didn't really enjoy An Enchantment of Ravens. A lot of people drew parallels to Akatar and everything and they didn't really like it. I liked it. I gave that one four stars. Um, and this one, though, I think is a million times better and I feel like everybody else agrees with me. This book was just so good. If you did not know, this book is a young enough fantasy book that is just so whimsical and magical. It is amazing. So this takes place in a fantasy land and this book is all about Elizabeth. Elizabeth is an orphan. When she was a child, she ended up being left on the doorstep of a great library. There are many amazing great libraries in this fantasy land and they all have grimoires in them. Now grimoires are books that are alive. They're like kind of like magical beings and the people in the libraries are tasked to take care of them, to guard them, and to make sure none of the books escape and wreak havoc in the population, in the cities, in the town, wherever. Because if a grimoire gets released they will turn into a malefic. Maleficed? Maleficed, that's the word. And it's kind of like a creature that can wreak havoc. And so Elizabeth, when she's a child, she gets left on the doorstep of a library. And so one, uh, I forget the term, but there are people who take care of the library and there's like a hierarchy, hi hierarchy, there you go, that's the word, hierarchy to the people who work in the library. So one of the main head honchos in this library takes it upon herself to kind of train Elizabeth, to keep her under her wing. And Elizabeth has grown up her entire life living in this magical library full of grimoires. And Elizabeth has always been known as somebody to subdue grimoires. She's also known for connecting more to grimoires than other people. She um, doesn't get attacked as much by grimoires because the grimoires notoriously attack the people in the library because they are like creatures. Think of the book in Harry Potter, y'all. Like the the monster book in Harry Potter that goes chomp chomp. That's basically like a lot of these grimoires of what they are. And so these librarians are tasked with controlling them, containing them, and taking care of them. And so Elizabeth has grown up her whole life living in these libraries and she wants nothing more than to like be one of the head honchos at the library and to have like a key which only like the higher ups can have and to like basically be one of the main people working at the library. That's all she wanted her entire life. That's all she's known her entire life. At the beginning of this book, one of the grimoires gets released. So it turns into one of the malefic, malefix, I can't ever say that word, malefix, which is like a, a monster wreaking, wreaking havoc. So it gets released. And so she takes it upon herself to try and control this malefic. But also by doing so, she finds out a bunch of secrets and things and gets blamed for stuff and she ultimately gets uh, targeted as the main person for a plot among these libraries. There's this plot going on. And so she gets put into like kind of like magical custody and by doing that she ends up across Nathaniel who is the hero the male lead of this book. Nathaniel is I believe they're called sorcerers. He's a magical being and this world is so cool though because to be like a sorcerer or like a magician in this land you have to have a demon companion you have to have a demon companion so that you can draw your power from something so demons in this land are from alternate dimensions or alternate worlds you can summon a demon and then you can bargain to have that demon be a part of you and to have that source from you but demons are highly dangerous and their main task in life is for their master to be dead so that they can be free um, so none of the like demons in this world like really like their master. They want them to die at some point so that they can be released. And these demons are notoriously known for being like quite evil. So yeah, sorcerers have demons as companions and things they get source from, magical source from. And so Nathaniel is a sorcerer and he has a companion, a demon companion named Silas. And oh my gosh, I love Silas so much. And so like I just said how demons don't care about their masters who they're served with um, because like they just want them to die so that they can be free. Silas may be the complete opposite. I love him. He is Nathaniel's demon and oh my word y'all. I 
I love him. I love him. Okay, I don't want to go into too much detail. I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm going to keep it kind of surface level here. I'm not going to talk about a lot of my thoughts right now, but I will pitch in some of my thoughts. So Nathaniel is the one who ends up picking up uh, Elizabeth to take her to kind of like the the magic police in this land. Um, he ends up like bringing her there and along the way they face some obstacles and they realize some things and it's just a whirlwind of a book. A lot of things happen in here. I personally loved this. I loved this y'all. The audiobook also is fan flippin -tastic. Please check out the audiobook if you have not yet. It is so good. I flew through it. I flew through it. I could not put the audiobook down. I first want to say I loved Mark Rogerson's writing style in here. It was beautiful. I honestly loved her writing style in book one too. I, I am adoring Margaret Rogerson. I feel like she's going to be an auto by author for me from now on. Her writing is just so whimsical and easy to like flow through. I will say there were some points where I noticed some of the world building like kind of got like mushed together all in the same section of the book and so that kind of got a little overwhelming because a bunch of the world building and the backstory would happen by people um like telling stories to Elizabeth and so that sometimes happened chapter after chapter after chapter for a large section of the book um so I kind of noticed that and I sometimes cared I sometimes didn't I didn't really mind but I feel like other people might but I will say her writing style just, it gives me the same feelings as like diving into a Sarah J Mass book I swear it's obviously not going to be the same as an SJM book because those books are new adult and this one is specifically young adult but I just loved the banter between the two characters and the tension there is tension there there's tension oh my gosh whoo so good so good okay so I said earlier how Nathaniel has Silas Silas is Nathaniel's demon Silas can look like human he can basically like he can also turn into a cat which I love. He can turn into a cat and he like turns into a cat and sometimes like sleeps next to Nathaniel or like sits on Nathaniel's shoulder as a white little cat and oh my gosh he's supposed to be this evil being that can kill anything with like the snap of his fingers and he's just a cute little white kitten. <laughs> he hates being hugged and kissed. He's not touchy-feely at all and so like Elizabeth just wants to like pet him and all he does is glare at her as like a cat and oh my gosh it's it's so good but with Silas and Nathaniel's relationship I was drawing parallels to another book that I read earlier this year I ended up reading Howl's Moving Castle for the first time I've never watched the movie I know the mov movie is notoriously amazing I've never watched it though because it's not on any free streaming platform and you have to buy it or use money use money to rent it, you know? And so I'm a broke college student. I'm not currently buying anything or renting anything at the moment. Um, so I haven't gotten a chance to watch the movie yet. So I have read the book though. I will say I was drawing a lot of parallels between Howell and Calcifer and their relationship in the book specifically. I know it's not the same in the movie, I don't think, because I've seen trailers. Calcifer does not look the same in the movie as he does in the book. Calcifer in the book is quite like moany and groany and complains a lot, but he does Howl's bidding, you know? And Howl is quite arrogant and knows that people love him and need him. And that's how Nathaniel acts and Silas like kind of like does everything that he talks about. But Calcifer and Silas both love their master. Like they do. I thought that immediately when I started reading this book that like they just had so many parallels. Obviously Silas is not a flame demon fire demon just living in a fire pit you know like he is an actual like being um but i just love silas and his little like quirks and oh he's one of my favorite characters now i love silas out of all the characters in this book silas is the best i love him he was just so like standoffish and not touchy feely at all but he loves nathaniel with every fiber of his being and it's just beautiful to like read about because like demons aren't supposed to love at all. Love is not a characteristic that they have. It's not an emotion that they have. And he like throughout Nathaniel's life, he ends up raising Nathaniel because when Nathaniel was younger, his parents ended up dying. Silas was originally her, his father's demon. And so when he's a young boy, whenever his dad dies, he ends up having Silas as his demon. So Silas ends up practically raising this boy. He learns how to cook and clean and um, just like help Nathaniel and does like everything Nathaniel asks for like he becomes like his father like his father figure and that is like not known at all in this world and it was just 
beautiful. I loved their relationship so much. I loved the world of demons. I thought the talk of demons was great and like so interesting. I want like another book talking about like the demon world in here because I just thought it was so cool. I thought it was amazing. I also want to say I normally don't like like mystery aspects in books. I'm not that big of a fan of it. I'm quite bored by it. Or it gets predictable to me. Like I already know what's going to happen even though the characters don't. So I think that's my main frustration with the mysteries in books is that the characters don't know who like the murderer or the killer or the person behind the scheme is. But like the reader you can obviously tell who it is. I love this book and the fact like they figure out who like the culprit is like pretty fast, you know, and like you get to see their journey of trying to expose this person. And I really liked that. I also forgot to mention there is a mystery part in the book. Um, as I said before, like Elizabeth gets blamed for something that happens in the library. And Elizabeth is trying to find out who actually did the thing that she is being blamed for. And she figures out who it is and everything. I loved the tension between Elizabeth and Nathaniel. It is there throughout the majority of this book. I think my like kissy tab is all the way like over halfway. So it's, it's slow burn though. And you get to like see how they like have this attraction between each other, but then they banter all the time and like they're trying not to fall for one another, but then they do. Oh, beautiful. There is also bisexual representation in here and Nathaniel in here is bisexual. And like, I just loved the like casual representation in here because apparently like he's, he's known as a bachelor in this like fantasy society. Um, he's quite famous and everything. And people want to know, Ooh, what girl's he going to get with? Who's going to be his future wife? And Elizabeth like brings it up at one point. Do you even like girls? Because that's like a rumor in like society is that the reason why Nathaniel's never like had like a woman as a prospect is because maybe he likes guys and she's like so do you like guys and he's like yeah I like guys and she's like oh okay I guess that's why like no women have like been brought up with you in society she's a little sad because she likes him but then he's like Elizabeth I also like girls too like I can like both of them it's not a big deal and oh, that was so like smooth and good Nathaniel's personality is just everything to me. I love him. He gave me a lot of Howl from Howl's Moving Castle vibes. Like his arrogance. What's the word I'm looking for? Like kind of like his vanity. He thinks of himself as very um, handsome, you know. Um, he does have a huge vulnerability to him because he did use, lose his parents, his whole entire family, his brother, his mother, his father, all at a young age. And he's only had Silas like his whole life. So he is so dependent on him and loves him with every fiber of his being. And he tends to shut people out because he has lost most of his loved ones like already and so he at first shuts Elizabeth out and like leaves her be because he doesn't want to lose her but uh she she ends up swaying him obviously so my last thoughts before I get into spoilers are just that I loved this book I really recommend it I'm going to be giving it a five out of five stars this is my first young adult fantasy in quite a long time and like I I loved it I really recommend it if you love the fantasy romance genre please pick this up I think you will love it. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about spoilers. I think I'm going to put the book down for this section. I've been holding it up for a while. I just want to say, like, the kissing scenes between Nathaniel and Elizabeth were top notch. Top notch. And that, like, that scene where they're, like, talking, talking to each other about how they almost had their first kiss and then they end up having their first kiss and, like, the tension and, like, the... Just the physical like touching between the two of them. Oh my word. The way that Margaret Margaret Rogerson like wrote that scene just like gave me butterflies. Like gave me butterflies. I was squealing. It was like a fangirl moment. Oh my gosh. It was so good. I <laughs> I just liked Ashcroft throughout this whole entire book. I kind of saw him as like the culprit here, the guy behind the scheme. I kind of saw it coming. But like again, I loved how like Elizabeth and Nathaniel already knew that he was like the guy behind everything. And so you just get to see them try to reveal him to society. And I really liked that because normally I don't like mysteries in books, but again, I liked this one, but I despised Ashcroft. I despised him. He did some pretty messed up things. The thing that I could not get over was the kidnapping of Silas. Again, I love Silas. He was probably my favorite character in this entire book and he did us wrong. You, you went down the wrong path by, uh, kidnapping him. Margaret Rogerson just wanted to like rip your heart out of this book because like Silas dies not once 
but twice. <laughs> Way to like stomp on my heart and break it into a million pieces. Like girl, like seriously, this broke my heart. I was doing a bunch of chores around the house and was even working out while reading this book. And both times that happened, I had to stop and just stand there and listen. Cause it was on audio. So I was just listening to it. And I was like, just standing there in total disbelief that she would kill off Silas. Again, not once, but twice. And like, I wish we had a little bit more of the ending because she calls out Silas's name and like, I think it means that he comes back. I'd love to read another book like around these characters, specifically one that has Silas in it. Oh my gosh, I would love that so much, but I, I, I doubt that we're gonna get that. So yeah, Silas's death scenes wrecked me and the scene where he like comes back the first time and where Nathaniel like summons him, whoa, that scene was so like cool in the way that it was written and just like everything going on and like Silas is like, not what Elizabeth saw, thought Silas was and like his true like form and nature, you know? Like that was so cool to read about. Oh, I also like started like tearing up whenever, um, cause I definitely teared up when Silas died, especially when he died the last time. Cause that was heartbreaking. Um, but I started tearing up with all those grimoires, all the grimoires like going to sacrifice themselves towards the end of the book to like, contain this giant malefic, you know? All these books who like, don't really like people who like chomp at everybody and try to like get released, like they're sacrificing themselves to save these people, which was, it was really good to read about. There was at one point we thought that, that Nathaniel was gonna die and if he died, I would have been so mad. <laughs> So mad. I'm still mad about uh, Silas dying. I think honestly, I was, if, if there wasn't that little bit of hope at the end, like I would have been so upset because like at least that little hope at the end with her saying his name and him maybe coming back to life, like at least there's a little bit of hope. I loved the romance in here. I loved Elizabeth's growth in here and her like discovering who she really is. I thought that was amazing. And just like the ending I felt like was so good. That ending like epilogue I felt like was amazing. I loved it. I loved this book. I think those are gonna be all my spoilery thoughts. Um, leave comments down below if you wanna talk more about this book. Um, but yeah, please check out this book if you have not yet, um, but obviously if you're watching this part, you probably have because it's the spoiler section, but uh, yeah. Please let me know down below uh, what you thought about this book. Give me your opinions, your thoughts, what your favorite scene was or your favorite character was. Thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.